heard that Orson Welles patterned his Unicron character after Marion Davies vagina. The ship is currently on a trajectory towards a planet known as totally not the Death Star at all. Uneducated robot populace still uses escalator slaves. Also, why the hell would robots need shopping malls? Is there a version of Abercrombie and Fitch for the yuppie bots? Is there a robot topic for goth bots? Nobody in this futuristic transformer society who watches the skies for a living saw this huge ass planet ship coming toward their planet. Marvelous! Look! It's Unicron! The only unique feature of this incredibly obvious Death Star ripoff is that it sucks things up into its weaponized butthole. Unicron's Thresher sounds exactly like the 40-year-old dude two rows in front of me eating double fistfuls of his large buttered popcorn with Junior Mint sprinkles. Hang on, the title is actually THE Transformers THE Movie? The hell sense does that make? I guess the screenwriter charged by the letter, cause hey, that Laserdisc player is not gonna pay for itself. Just when nine-year-old me was about to strip this movie's title of being the Citizen Kane of animated robot movies, the opening credits hit me with the wallop. Listen, I love the theme song as much as anyone, but this movie is 79 minutes long and covers a lot of ground, and they still decided to literally play the entire glam metal version. It is the year 2005. The treacherous Decepticons have conquered the Autobots' home planet. There's also this fellow named 50 Cent on the radio that can't stop talking about how many times he's been shot. I'm pretty sure nobody explains how Laserbeak, a Decepticon spybird, was able to fly into this moon base undetected. I want you to make a special run to Autobot City on Earth. Wait, how f***ing close is Earth to the Autobots' home planet? Even if Ironhide were able to move as fast as a normal spaceship, it'd probably take a while to get there, let alone a round trip. Your days are numbered now, Decepticreeps! That's Deceptor Racist. Soundwave, play back Laserbeak's findings. Playing back Laserbeak's footage requires a Decepticon with a video deck, a huge USB R2-D2 connector of some sort, and practically an entire mini-model spaceship port. That crazy 2005 technology, man. Also, the universe that has transforming robots and intergalactic space travel is also still dependent on VHS tapes. Laserbeak was able to set up about seven different camera angles when he compiled his spy footage. But also, where is camera? To get this shot, Laserbeak would be in full f***ing view of Optimus. I mean, look how close to Ironhide's face he is. Megatron. Even though these are robots and could survive the cold vacuum of space, it's still a f***ing vacuum. These assholes should have been sucked out of the ship as soon as Megatron breached the hull. Megatron, who clearly has an awesome laser blasting cannon attached to himself, simply changes into a big gun for some other asshole to use. The Autobots were clearly trained at the finest Stormtrooper aiming school and are proud to show off their skills whenever they can. This was almost too easy, Starscream! When we slip by the early warning systems in their own shuttle and destroy Autobot City, the Autobots will be vanquished forever! Man, the refs missed one there. Megatron should have been immediately flagged for expositional taunting. The Transfishing the Movie. Fish are jumping today, huh, Dano? Hard to tell, considering the person in charge of focusing this shot must have been on a massive dose of quaaludes. Hat Rod, the shuttle's coming! Judging by the scope of Daniel's locator, it could be landing at any location in the Northern Hemisphere. Daniel unwittingly hoverboards through the Battletoads wind tunnel level. If you're gonna ride, Dano, ride in style! Also, just leave that probably expensive piece of futuristic awesomeness back in the wilderness. Why settle for a peak, Daniel, when you can see everything from Lookout Mountain? I guess Autobot City is roughly around Chattanooga. This Decepticon has Hot Rod in his sights, but waits just long enough for this dickhead to stop him. Let's burn rubber! Okay, I realize this is a cartoon. I really do, but these Autobots have distinct abilities, right? And Hot Rod is a f***ing sports car, but can somehow easily make it down this unpaved mountain? What about me, Magnus? What about me? My, 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 I Blur, aka the Micro Machines guy, aka John Moshita Jr., inspires dickhead nitpicky YouTube channel 26 years later. But Hot Rod and Cup are still outside the city! Hot Rod and Cup are driving on a narrow road beside a mountain, and the flying Decepticon still can't shoot them. Pathetic fools! There's no escape! Realizing how terrible his Blasterium is, Starscream decides to try and insult these two to death. Look, I know they're transforming an entire city and all, but this shit takes forever. Like, arming the Death Star forever. Shouldn't they go to a more immediate option if they're already under attack? These Decepticons use these extremely useful Insecticons who can eat through metal only one time and don't bring more of them. Can't this motherfucker fly? The fuck is he hanging onto a bridge for? The Insecticons are in our way! Megatron just ordered these bug assholes to breach the defenses, but once they did, he allows this gaping hole to go unguarded and unentered. Luckily, the Autobots have a second door behind their main door, just in case the first one gets chewed up by Insecticons. Movie 1980s so hard that it required at least one Transformer on each side to be able to turn into a ghetto blaster. Do you think you got through to Prime? Let's hope so, because if I didn't, we're all gonna look like burnt out toaster ovens. Why the hell do you fade to black here before coming back to the exact same battle?
Did they get confused and think there was going to be a commercial break coming? Megatron's making his big push, and we gotta push back! But there are treads and wheels on that machine, so shouldn't they be able to, I don't know, drive it into place? That did it. That did f***ing what? The launcher's in a slightly different position than it was when these assholes arrived. I'm devastated. It's almost like some kind of Voltron of some sort. Lasers, guns, robots, excitement. Dinobots, destroy Devastator. Why did they need the Dinobots on this mission? Is it because they needed to get all the toys they've ever made up in this f***ing movie? At this point, I'm half expecting to see a random GoBot. You got the touch! To think this song was sung by Dirk Diggler using the equally porny moniker Stan Bush. <laughs> Stan. These Decepticons are the slowest, attackingest motherfuckers ever. This battle's been raging all night, and Optimus and his crew just got here for reinforcement. But these wads are standing in the same place they've been for the last five movie minutes. Come on, even robots don't think about shooting out the goddamn tires. One shall stand, one shall fall. Optimus's most glaring weakness is to dramatically announce his entrance before a fight to the death. I've got to help Prime! Stay away, lad! That's Prime's fight! Yeah, because there's such an honor code with Transformers when it comes to these fights. If Hot Rod helps and Megatron's defeated, he will get such a grounding. <laughs> this Transformers movie said, F*** your childhood to all the kids my age. <laughs> Autobots are seriously unable to hit an enormous Decepticon carrying another wounded Decepticon even though they're not returning fire. Prime, you can't die! Do not grieve. I'll be resurrected in roughly 20 years just in time to see Megan Fox in her prime. But one day, an Autobot shall rise from our ranks. Old character spouts prophecy while dying, cliche. Autobots opt for a straight black and white IG filter when they die, while Decepticons opt for more of a sepia tone. Are we supposed to believe Unicron has some sort of God's eye view of everything in the universe? Or is this another laser beak thing? The f Constructicons unite! How the f*** can they build the Devastator inside the spaceship? Welcome, Megatron. Wait, was Unicron looking for the abandoned Decepticons? Or is this where almost dead Decepticons end up? In some sort of f***ed up Dante's Inferno scenario? I... am Unicron. It really doesn't pain me that this was Orson Welles' last performance, since I'm sure he was paid well. But the fact that his heavily processed voice is coming out of an animated robotic space butthole makes me view Touch of Evil through a slightly different lens. I have summoned you here for a purpose. Summoned? How do you summon something that is practically dead and floating in space? Is there some sort of auto-summoning signal? Are these guys hooked up via Skynet or some sh The point is he's dead, and the Matrix died with him! No, the point is you are a fool. But with that said, you are the best evil robot I can get to do this for me. What is it about Unicron that makes him able to do this? He's a planet-devouring robot, sure, but he can also retrofit Megatron with a new suit and new weaponry? Also, Unicron does nothing to make Megatron smarter. He's got carte blanche to make the best robot slave ever, and he ends up making Megatron legacy. Way too many seconds of this. Scourge, the tracker, and his huntsman, the sweeps. After reading this scene in the script, it was probably difficult for the Hasbro executives to hide their boners, considering they just introduced a million new toys. Also, the powerful Unicron, who we saw suck a planet dry at the beginning of the movie, needs to create minions to destroy the Matrix of Leadership, rather than simply go to Earth and do it himself. What a dumbass. I will rip open Ultra Magnus and every other Autobot. Apparently, if you get an upgrade from Unicron, he throws in a new famous voice free of charge. Rather than spending several minutes introducing Megatron's new posse, I would much rather see how Starscream won that fight to see who would lead the Decepticons. So the movie has eliminated two of the franchise leads within roughly the first 30 minutes of the movie, which is definitely what everyone paid for when they bought a ticket back in 1986. Roger me! Wilco me! Anything! Hello, hello, Earth! I'm picking up a fake signal! Just a minute ago you needed a whole f***ing station to try and send a message to Optimus Prime, but now you can receive faint signals by yourself? <laughs> This premature celebration is done before they even look back at Unicron, making it so premature that they should have started it back on the moon base. Oh sh! What are we gonna do now? Movie tries to justify its PG rating with a tiny bit of salty language when it already earned that sh by killing off half the fucking cast. How dare Unicron! Cybertron and all its moons belong to me. Unicron created Galvatron, but could not fix his insubordination. I, Galvatron, will crush you just as Megatron crushed Prime. And you'll die trying, just like Megatron. Wait, how the hell did Ultra Magnus hear Galvatron say anything? Do all the robots have those Avengers communicators built in? This is one of the very few funny parts in this movie, but I'm wondering why the Dinobots not only hadn't been helping with the battle, but need to be boosted up into the fucking shuttle. Transform back into fucking robots, assholes. Tell Grimlock about Petro Rabbits again. 
excerpts from John Steinbots of Mice and Autobots. Wait, Ultra Magnus! Our sea's still out there! Ultra Magnus subscribes to the everyone left behind that's not currently on this ship philosophy. Also, during this entire takeoff, the Decepticons miss the ship and RC with every single shot they take. That was close! F you, kid! You're a fing liar! Congratulations, Autobots! We've lost them! The f the Decepticons were literally right on top of them as they were lifting off, and they headed straight for f***ing space, not behind some asteroid. I guess Galvatron took some time off to shoot some nudes or something. More casual Star Wars thievery. Cup and Hot Rod just bought it! And I just bought Cup and Hot Rod. Wait, did I get suckered by subliminal advertising again? Damn it! Somehow Magnus performs this trick without the Decepticons noticing. These missiles hit the ship, then apparently go inside and make coffee, use the restroom, and then blow up. The Autobots have been terminated, and the Matrix with them. Unicron can cause long-distance pain to Galvatron, but simply can't send him a message that he didn't destroy the Matrix. Transformers movie suddenly turns into an episode of Full House. The last time we saw Cup and Hot Rod, they were crashing onto this seemingly all-metal planet that did not appear to have any large bodies of water on it, but okay, sure. I feel like we're just playing a level of Mega Man at this point. These fish are robots, right? So why are they eating the other fish? Why would any robots eat? You don't see Ultra Magnus chomping on a sandwich, do you? How stupid is it that there's a robo version of everything? Hey guys, what if there's this planet where everything is the same as it is on Earth, but the plants and animals are robots that somehow evolved the exact same way they did on Earth, only robots? You know, if I haven't made it clear that they're robots yet. Talk to me! Fix me! Hey, just because these guys are robots doesn't mean they get to talk normally underwater. I mean, look at this guy. There are bubbles coming out of his mouth. Why doesn't he sound like... I think Daniel can make himself useful with this. Damn, RC. He's pretty young for a sex ro- It was Spike's exosuit. Oh. Dad's exosuit. He told me all about it. I can totally wear that. My dad and I are the same height, and we both love my mom in the very same way. Offer expires while you wait. Voice actor who receives top billing for this movie doesn't appear until almost 50 minutes into it. That does it. Well, what do you think? Well, Hot Rod, I can see that you used your tools to fix me, but I still can't quite put my finger on why you gave me that blowjob in the middle of it. Now let's find the Dinobots and get them off this twisted planet. How do you know that the Dinobots aren't in that underwater hell you just came from? How the f*** did they get that separated from the Dinobots? I'll use the universal greeting. Universal greeting? If this greeting is so universal, then Hot Rod would presumably also know it. Oh no, some of our heroes are in peril, and oh yeah, we forgot about Galvatron and Unicron, and the fact that Optimus is dead, and Daniel's father is most likely dead, but f*** it, let's spend some time on some robot shark planet. Who's Unicron? A planet that devours everything in its path. Krennic stays alive only long enough for some helpful exposition. My boy hid my nose! God damn, I wish this movie would make up its mind about whether it's for five-year-olds or fifteen-year-olds. Why has this asshole not won yet? Ultra Magnus is dead, and the Matrix destroyed! Jesus Christ, the scene where Galvatron thought he beat Ultra Magnus happened 11 minutes ago in movie time, and I just want to hammer home that Unicron dragging Galvatron all the way back here just to tell him he didn't is the stupidest thing I've seen in any Transformers film ever, including the Michael Bay ones. The Matrix has not been destroyed. And Ultra Magnus lives on the planet of junk. Once again, if Unicron was so concerned about this sh why didn't he scoot over to the dirt mall planet and suck it up then? Decepticons! I know, right? It's shocking that the robots that were just recently following you have now followed you to where you landed. Also, what the hell? Galvatron went all the way back to Unicron, then all the way back to the junk planet, and all the Autobots have had time to do is weld a couple of pieces back on the ship? I thought space was big and stuff. <laughs> Man, these Autobots are the absolute worst at leaving people behind. Human germ! Transform! Two armed robots are taken out by what appears to be a Roomba. Also, if this suit transforms so dramatically, I can only imagine that Daniel's limbs have all been severed during the transition, and he's in severe shock right now. There they are! Attack! Be sure to be ludicrously ineffective, just like we've been this entire movie. Prime, you said the Matrix would light our darkest hour. He's also dead, so you can see where believing in things got him. These shark things evolved to have tails shaped like maces, which makes them menacing, sure, but is probably hell on their swimming abilities. This escape scene is such a f*** you to physics that I'm surprised Galileo, Newton, and Einstein didn't arise from the dead to destroy Hasbro. Oh good, these slowly moving dinosaurs are here to literally ex machina the situation. Me Grimlock want to munch better! I hear this is also a slang term for robot lesbian sex. I want to remove a sin for a movie playing a weird Ali Yankovic song, but during an action scene? Okay, so Daniel knocks this guy out with a steel beam, and suddenly there's no danger anymore. A minute ago, Daniel said, They're indestructible, and they're everywhere! 
and sure enough, they were everywhere. This helicopter guy took care of one or two of them, but there were still a lot after that. I guess the rest were killed by editor David Hankins. How in the ever-loving did Hot Rod and Cup know where the other Autobots were? This is an entirely different planet. Weird Al Yankovic would be amazing at CinemaSins. At one point, this movie's title was The Transformers, The Movie, The Electric Boogaloo, The Bart The. Look, he's alive! Man, I wish Optimus Prime were alive to see Ultra Magnus get resurrected from the dead. Where's Galvatron? Where is he? Unicron! How the f would Rekgar know this? I feel like half this movie's plot is based on robots being able to sense where other robots are. What a time we considered sparing the wretched little planet Cybertron. But now we shall witness its dismemberment. But wouldn't it have been easier for Unicron to f Cybertron up in its normal planet destroying form? This transformation seems unnecessary, unless you're trying to sell a toy or so. Oh. No. This is how gravity works in space, kids. Quick, this way! All of these Transformers transform into fast modes of transportation, but they decide running is the best option against the rapidly advancing Death Claws. It cannot be opened. Not by a Decepticon. Also, not by an Autobot, considering Ultra Magnus's impotent attempt. Destroy him, Galvatron, now, or you yourself shall be obliterated. Of course, my master! If Unicron can still control Galvatron, then he should be able to make him destroy the Matrix. Although we don't know what would happen if he destroyed the Matrix because movie doesn't tell us, but I bet it'd be really bad. Dinobots are way too prominently featured in a battle that involves an omnipotent planet, several high-functioning Autobots, and a magical silly thing that has super abilities and stuff. By the way, these flying Dinobots are the same Dinobots who couldn't get their dumbasses on the ship earlier because of something-something runtime. Why not transform into the car at all times during these things? Why do Transformers and humans inside Transformers put up with this running sh**? I mean, did they just rupture Unicron's bladder? Stupid crockpot of death that hasn't factored into the movie at all is now featured to add some unnecessary drama to the end of the movie. Thank you! You did it! I'd remove 50 sins right now if his dad tripped and fell into the acid anyway. Sense of satisfaction now! You got the touch! <laughs> also, jeez, this Matrix of Leadership thing is a dick. It waited until just now to activate. Also, considering how Hot Rod escapes this situation solely by something magical being close to him, it's clear the Transformers unintentionally inspired the end of every Harry Potter movie. Arise, Rodimus Prime. Why didn't a porn star ever use this name? Also, here's some more bullshit with the Matrix of Leadership. Are you telling me I have to guess who's worthy of the Matrix before it'll work? How do you do that? Do you need to conduct American Ninja Warrior trials or something? Or just hope you luck out like this? Light our darkest hour. The Matrix of Leadership is basically just more infuriating kryptonite, taking down a character that is way too powerful for his own good. Unicron should have won this an hour ago when nobody knew how to operate it. Shouldn't both of his eyes be emitting a green light right now, since his left eye was also damaged? Let this mark the end of the Cybertronian Wars as we march forward to a new age of peace and happiness. So, everything's okay then? We don't need like five live action movies in the future? <laughs> this, this is just like when I found out the Iron Giant was still alive. Yep, it's a whopper, all right. But first, I work got water! Unless you've got power! You got the touch! You got the power! Scourge, the tracker, the sweeps, Cyclonus, the warrior, and his armada. Blade, laser, blazer. Beat him to the shark guns. You know, I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. It's your one way to be nice. Oh, heavy metal. It's Mega Maid. She's gone from suck to blow. Ah! Am I just gonna keep falling? You must know something about the prophecy. I know, I'm doing my best, but I, I don't, I don't... The prophecy. I made it up. Autobots, prepare to board the shuttles. This new menace is more dangerous than all the Decepticons put together. I want that camper torn apart. Full cavity searchers all around. Aww, you guys made me eat. 
I'll use the universal greeting. Universal greeting? Bar and you. Keep trying. Silence or you'll be held in contempt of this court. I hold myself in contempt! Where's my dad? That's what we're gonna find out. And knowing is half the battle.